The scene is a missile testing base somewhere in the continental United States. The time, half past two on a Tuesday afternoon, five, maybe ten years from now. A rather unusual missile is getting worked over. Blast off is ten minutes away and the countdown is in its last stages. And a man is sitting inside this missile, waiting. The United States is about to make its first attempt to send a manned rocket to the moon. Nine minutes to blast off, Captain. Still feel loose and easy? Like a bird, Colonel. Waiting to be cut loose and sore. How do you feel? Me, Captain? I'm just sitting here in the observation tower. You're the one on the launching pad. You're the man going to the moon. And you're the one who has to face all the reporters after blast off. Me, I'm glad I'll be up there alone. How much time left, Colonel? Six minutes, 20 seconds. Let's run through the schedule one last time. Okay. I sit in this cradle and I wait for the rockets to toss me up into space. I get 500 seconds of 4G acceleration. Then I sit around and look out the viewport for the next four days while the ship coasts in zero-G free fall. I'm roughly eight and a quarter minutes past four. On Sunday afternoon, the autopilot is going to turn the rocket engines on again, long enough to land me in the Oceanus Procellarum, which better be as dry as the Palomar boys say it is. I climb into my little Jim Dandy space suit, wander around the moon for a while, take some snapshots, pick up a couple of rocks as souvenirs. And 15 hours after landing, I get back into my ship and I come home. Did I leave anything out? Another thing, Captain. Three minutes, ten seconds. Well, all I do is sit here and wait anyway. Computer down below in the belly of the ship does all the work. Me, Mike Wellman, first man on the moon. Maybe, anyway. What do you mean, maybe? The ship's been tested thoroughly. There's no possibility of... A blow-up? No, oh, go ahead. Don't be afraid to say it. I wasn't talking about that. The odds are pretty good that this bird is going to get me there. The only thing I'm wondering about is whether someone else is going to get there ahead of me. I'd hate to find a big vodka party going on when I get there. Ninety seconds. They're clearing the launching pad, Captain. We better break contact now. Good luck. The next time I hear from you, it's going to be from space. Sure, Colonel. I'll report as soon as I'm in free fall. Then radio messages every four hours. Uh, you won't forget about those baseball scores, will you? Of course. Thirty seconds, Captain. And all America is rooting for you. And I'm rooting for the Dodgers. So long, Colonel. See you next week when I get back. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, mark. Launching base, how do I come in? Clear and sharp, Captain. I'm oh, glad to hear it. Okay, uh, ship's time, 1,452 hours. Blast off went fine from this end. I got through acceleration good enough. 4G's isn't much fun, but I don't mind it in eight minute stretches. The uh, ship's in free fall now, no gravity at all. And it's weird, all right. Even after all those hours in the training chamber, I still feel a little strange. Very quiet up here. <laughs> nice. A man really can think here. And the view is really something. Where do you see the photos? How about the psychological reaction? You don't feel cut off? Me? A guy whose idea of heaven is being along with some books? Colonel, I like it up here. The psych test said I was an introvert, didn't they? Well, not really. Just sort of solitary-minded. Ah, uh, same thing. Well, it's us um, solitary-minded people who are going to be your spacemen, Colonel. We don't mind the loneliness. Listen, Colonel. How are the cosmic ray readings coming through? Perfect. All the equipment seems to be functioning. Yeah, including the pilot. Or rather, the live cargo, because that's all I really am. Okay, Colonel, I got a few odd jobs to do on board. I'll be talking to you again in four hours. Over. Here I am again, Colonel. Two days out, still no sweat. I'm getting used to this no-gravity business. And I'll I... Go uh... on with the rest of the report, Captain. There's been a change in the operational plans. Huh? What kind of change? You aren't landing on the moon. Pentagon orders are for you to adjust the computer to alternate course B. Circle the moon and return to Earth without landing. Hey, wait a minute, sir. Uh, how come the switch? Well, it's... it's an awkward situation, Captain. 
You see, between the time I last spoke to you and now, the Russians, I know this will come as kind of a shock to you, the Russians made a successful landing on the moon. No! Radio Moscow announced it two hours ago. And since then, we've picked up broadcasts from the Russian ship. They've landed, all right. They beat us to it. By two stinking days, two days earlier, and I would have been the first. You haven't heard the worst part of it yet. The Russians have claimed the moon. They what? Like Columbus claiming the Western Hemisphere. We're putting up a yell, of course, but there just isn't any precedent for this kind of thing. The UN is meeting to decide whether they have any right to. So this is why I can't land, huh? The Russians say they'll regard any lunar landing as trespassing on their property. We can't risk an incident, of course. So for the time being, we're going to hold back and wait till the legal aspect of this business is worked out. So I can't land. You send me up here and I ride around for a week and don't even put my foot down on the moon. Uh-uh, Colonel. Russia doesn't own the moon, no matter what they say. Captain Woman. I'm sorry, Colonel. I'm more than halfway there and I'm darned if I'm going to miss my chance. I'm going to land, sir. Well, then listen to me. You can't disobey orders. Yes, I can, sir. I'm landing. Over and out. It's not that the moon wasn't meant for man. It's just that man was never designed for the moon. It's a fantastically inhospitable place. Harsh, blinding sunlight with no atmosphere to dim it. Jagged shadows. The rocks are hard, sharp-edged. There has been no weathering to soften them, and the shadows are just as hard and black. It's not a nice place to be alone or even when there's only one other human being within 200,000 miles. I don't know if you want to hear from me again, Colonel, but I'm beaming this anyway. Look, I just wanted to let you know that I've landed on the moon as originally scheduled. Yeah, right on the nose, in the designated landing area. Northern branch of the Oceanus Procellarum. And you can tell the Palomar fellas that they were right all along. Maybe this was an ocean once, but not in the last million years or so. As for the uh, Russian ship, it isn't any hoax. I saw it when I came down. It's about uh, 50 miles north of here. Maybe later I'll break out the rocket sled and wander over there for some vodka. Uh, uh, the Russians are trying to contact me now. I better shift channel, see what they want. Over, Colonel. <laughs> Come on in, Ivan. Da, niet, tvarich, nishivo. I'm afraid that gives us up my Russian vocabulary, Ivan. How's your English? I am Captain Dmitry Novikov, Soviet Space Forces. You are illegally trespassing on our property, American. I am, huh? Say, your English is pretty good, but your politics isn't. You say the moon is yours, huh? Lunar Soviet Socialist Republic? I'm sorry to disagree. Just getting here first doesn't give you the right to claim the whole place, you know. The matter has been considered by our legal experts. We have established prior claim. I'm under orders to request you to leave Russian territory immediately. But this is cockeyed, claiming the whole moon. Now, look here, Dmitry, let You me... will address me as Captain Novikov. Okay, now look here, Novikov. The moon's a big place, and there's room for a lot of us up here. It really isn't fair to want to hog the whole thing yourself. The Presidium sets Soviet policy, not space pilots. I'm instructed to warn you that you are trespassing. I do not wish to debate the matter with you. So I'm trespassing, then. What are you going to do about it? My ship is armed. And you can't figure out any better way of celebrating the conquest of space and starting a war about it? The United States ordered you not to make a landing. They recognize our claim. We cannot tolerate violation of our rights. And you're going to be nasty about it, I see, huh? Well, I'll take my chances. Now I've got some work to do before I go back. I'll be leaving the moon in 14 hours and a bit. Hey, uh, now how long are you staying up here? You've been here better than two days already. You planning to hold the fort forever? My plans for departure should not concern you. Well, I'm just curious, that's all. Okay, Dimitri. Maybe I'll be talking to you again soon. And yeah, you uh, sneaky son of a gun, congratulations. You did get here first. Over. <laughs> Come in, launching base, you hear me? We're getting you, woman. We read you. Look, I, I just had a little chat with the Ruski. 
There seems to be only one of them. You gave me some malarkey about firing on me if I don't clear off the moon right away. Wellman, you insubordinate idiot, you're liable to touch off a war over this moon trip. Well, what was I supposed to do? Smile politely and turn back just because they got here first? You think they have any right to claim the moon? Of course not, but that's not the point. You were ordered not to risk trouble by landing. Yeah, and I landed anyway. Well, go ahead, chop my head off when I get back to Earth. Meanwhile, I'm here, and if that Russian doesn't blow me up, I expect to do a little exploring in the next 14 hours. I don't think the Russian's going to blow you up. He's got his own troubles. What do you mean? Well, we've decoded some of the messages he's been sending back to Moscow. Seems he made a faulty landing and has to make some repairs on his ship. It may take him a week or two, and he doesn't have enough food. Russia may be crowing about claiming the moon, but it's going to look bad for them if their spaceman can't get back and starves to death. Yeah. Yeah, that would be rough. Uh, maybe I'd better call him back and see if I can help him out. Well, then leave him alone. He's a Russian. He's a human being. And so am I. Get off the wire and let me call him, Colonel. I order you not to make any overtures to that Russian. Look, I'm not on Earth now. There doesn't need to be a Cold War up here, too, Colonel. And I have plenty of food to spare. Give the folks back home my love. I'm going to call Ivan again. <laughs> You know, it's one thing to make a claim to say, uh, uh, this is mine. It's something else to hold on to it and make the claim stick. Somewhat like the colonel. Uh, it was a little difficult for him to enforce the orders he was trying to give to the man on the moon. Novikov, you getting me? You have three hours to leave Russian territory. Then I must commence action. Now, look, don't give me that stuff. I know your ship's disabled and you're in trouble. This is untrue. My ship is in good condition. Dan Trotsky was Rasputin's brother. You know, Novikov, I sometimes feel I'm the only sane man in a world of lunatics. Those idiots down there in Washington didn't want me to land because it might make Moscow sore. And you don't want any help from me because I'm not a good Marxist. It's a losing battle, Dmitri. Everyone seems to know what he really wants, and yet everybody tries hard to get the opposite. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. You just sit tight. I'm going to launch the rocket sled and get over your way with a couple of cartons of provisions. If you won't take food from a lackey of Wall Street, that's your business. And I'm coming over anyway. Whew. Oh, it's good to get that helmet off. Hello, Novikov. My name's Mike Wellman. Why have you done this? What trick are you playing? Listen, friend, all I'm doing is bringing some of my spare food. Nothing up my sleeve at all. I do not understand that. Up my sleeve? It's a decadent capitalist idiom. It means I'm not trying to fool you. The supplies are out on the rocket sled. Get into your suit and let's drag them in. I said I would fire on you. And you bring me food? Yeah, silly, isn't it? But they told me they picked up your messages to Moscow. That you were going to be stuck here a few weeks for repairs. I was not telling the truth. Mm hmm? This ship will never take off again. The rear rocket tubes are hopelessly crumpled. The fuel field lines are severed. It was a very poor landing. I gave incorrect data to the computer. And you told them you could fix it? They do not like to receive news of failure. Leave me alone, American. Take your food and go away. Hey, what are you going to eat? Rocks? There won't be a rescue ship up here for a month, at least. There will be no rescue ship for me. I do not deserve rescue. You'll just sit up here and starve to death? I made the faulty landing. I cannot return to my country now. And I disobeyed orders. I wasn't supposed to land because the moon is red property now. But the only Russian here is stranded, helpless. Do not mock me. I'm not. There's a fine bunch of spacemen you and me are. You smash up your ship, and I disobey half my orders. But I'm glad I disobeyed anyway. At least there'll be one practical result of my trip. I'll be saving a man's life. You? Sure. You're coming back with me to Earth. We can jettison some of the meters and stuff and make room for you. I bet you don't weigh more than 150. We can manage. Sure. But save the butts for later. And if you're trying to argue me out of it, I'll slug you. <laughs> A 
Hello, Colonel. I'm on my way home. Pretty fair blast off, and we're 20,000 miles out in the moon now. Oh, uh, I left a little of the equipment behind. The next ship can pick it up. And I've got a passenger. You mean that Russian? Yeah. Seems the ship was wrecked, so I talked him into coming back with me. He's down back in the galley fixing lunch now. I guess we'll both be called traitors for saying it, but uh, we've sort of become friends. And he doesn't think Russia ought to claim the moon either. Well, we have one distinction anyway. Maybe a Russian ship was the first to get to the moon, but it was an American one that made the first successful round trip. I like to think of it in a different way. Not an American ship or a Russian ship. Stuff like that shouldn't matter anymore. Call it a ship from Earth. Yeah. Novikov and I started out separately, but we're coming back together. The first expedition from Earth to Moon is coming on. to man, of course, to mankind. Uh, you know, Earth is really a twin planet. No other planet we know of has a moon that's practically as big as the planet itself. The moon is Earth's smaller sister, and it, like the Earth, belongs to man. We earned it. We worked for it for three billions of years. We have been evolving and struggling and growing. The next growth is out to the moon. We're on our way. Oh. 